Welcome back to the, another tutorial, video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna explain you hacker a new function for us, for you, that you haven't been so far, I guess, which is called Ackerman function. The Ackerman function, let me write its name here, Ackerman function is a recursive function. So the recursive function means that it calls itself repeatedly. So um, the Ackerman function, let's say that we have function a m n, it's going to return us three outputs. So three types of output actually. In case m is zero, it's going to return us n plus one. In case m is zero, okay? In case n is 0, it's going to return us a, m minus 1, and 1. In case n is 0, and in case neither m nor n is 0, then it's going to return us a, m minus 1, and then a, m n minus 1. Okay, in case m and n is greater than 0, n is greater than 0 and n is greater than 0. Alright, let's see how this function actually works. So let's uh, begin with a simple explanation. Let's begin with, um, let's say, uh, a uh, m is 0 and n is 5. So in this case, our function is going to return us m plus 1 because m is uh, equal to 0. So it's going to return us m plus 1, n plus 1, which is 5 plus 1, and 6. And let's have a look at another example, um, a bit complicated, let's say. Let's say that we have a 1 and 2. So in this case, uh, neither m nor n is 0. So we're going to come here and the function is going to call itself like this. a m minus 1, which is 1 minus 1, 0. And a, again, m, don't forget m is 1 still here m 1 and n minus 1 which is 2 minus 1 1 so here things got a bit uh, complicated because here inside of a recursive function uh, inside of a uh, uh, anchorman function I have one more anchorman function here so I'm gonna calculate it separately and then I'm gonna come here and write its output again. So I'm gonna calculate this part. So this a11 again meets this condition. So I'm gonna do a11 is equal to a11 is equal to a m which is still one and n minus one which is zero. So I have 0, so I'm going to come and check. OK, in this time, n is 0. If n is 0, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this output. So it's going to equal to a m minus 1, which is 1 minus 1, 0, and simply just 1. So in this case, m is 0. And as you know, if m is 0, that was going to be n plus 1 which is 1 plus 1 and it, it is 2. So uh, the output of this function is going to be 2. So I'm going to come here and write 2 instead of a11. So it's going to equal to a02. OK, again I have 0 and I'm going to come here. m is 0. In case m is 0, the output is n plus 1, which is 2 plus 1 and 3. 
Yeah, basically this is how the function works. I hope uh, it's clear for you. And I should mention that this function grows so fast, so you need to be careful. Let's check it with uh, Wikipedia. Let's check the um, table uh, with Wikipedia. So, as you see, when you have a function which is 4 and 3, it's going to calculate, it's going to call itself repeatedly again and again, and then as a result, at the end, you got this output, which is quite big. So, uh, that's why your computer will not be able to calculate it. This is the table for values of a, a, m, n. So in case you have 0, you got 1. You have m0, uh, n1, you got 2, uh, as, as it is clear for you. Uh, whenever it is 0, the output is going to be n plus 1. Uh, you have 3, 0, 5, 3, 1, 13, 3, 2, 29, etc. Everything is okay with 3 so far. But when you have 4, you should be um, careful because, okay, you got the output with 4, 0, it's 13. With 4, 1, it is this number. But with 4, 2, it's, it gets complicated. Uh, I, I, th I think... Um, it's not gonna c calculate it either, but when you have 4, 3, it gets more complicated, so your computer will not be able to calculate it. Now, let's go and write this uh, function in C. Let's see how it's, it can be written. So firstly, I'm gonna include a standard input output header. Uh, that, uh, that's what I need so far, because I'm gonna use print and I'm gonna use scan function. So uh, I have main function here, uh, I just write it so now. Now above main I'm going to write the prototype of Ackermann function. So Ackermann function returns me integer numbers. By the way, I should mention that m and n are non-negative values, okay? So um, I assume that's going to return me uh, integer and that's why I call its data type as integer and then I give it a name, I'm going to call it Ackerman and Ackerman function takes two arguments which is m and n and they are also integer, I, I'm going to give only integer numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, I can give only uh, uh, I mean uh, I, I'm going to check it with uh, 3, 4, 3, 7, whatever, but I cannot check it with greater than 4 and 3 or 2. So that's why I'm going to call these numbers integer as well, m and n. And now it's time to fill the inside of a function. So I have three different conditions. First condition, if m is gr uh, equal to 0, if m is equal to 0, and as I have mentioned, m and n should be non-negative numbers, that's why I'm going to write n is greater than 0. So in this case, the function is going to return n plus 1. Return n plus 1. Okay, else if another condition which says n is equal to 0, n is equal to 0, and m is greater than 0. In this case, return a m minus 1, 1. Return. It's not a, so the function name is Ackerman. That's why I'm going to call it Ackerman. m minus 1 and 1. Else if, in case m is greater than 0 and n is greater than 0, in this case, returns us Ackermann m minus 1 again one more Ackermann m n minus 1 that's pretty easy but uh, what I want to let to what I want to say is that uh, I'm gonna write it uh, I'm gonna write it just write uh, after main function, but I'm going to declare uh, the um, uh, prototype above main function. Okay, 
So yeah, this is function prototype. Prototype. Okay, uh, the function is ready. We have filled the inside of a function, and we can go ahead and uh, ca do calculation, and we can call it in main. So as the function takes two arguments, I'm going to have two different numbers here as well, well so here variables here as well, and I'm going to ask user to enter numbers for m and n. And after user enters, I'm going to save them in the address of those variables, which is m and n. After that, I want to store the result of this uh, function, output of this function, in a variable which is called result. And uh, I can write result is equal to Ackerman. I'm going to pass arguments parameters for this, which is m and n. And to see the result, I'm going to print it out. The result is percentage %d, which is result. OK, um, the function is ready, so we can go ahead and try to check if everything is OK. Yeah, it seems everything is OK, and let's do it with this uh, table. Let's say that m is 3 and uh, n is 2. 3 and 2. OK, the result is 29. Good. Now let's check it with 3 and uh, and 3 and 4. We can check it with 3 and 4. The result is good. We have 125. But we, let's check it with oops, 4 and 2 to see if we're going to get the result or not. It's going to be a big number. Um, I don't know the computer can calculate it or not, but we will see the output. Let me pause it for now. The number or yeah, I think yeah, it's a big number so it couldn't calculate it either yeah basically this is um, the uh, all you need to know about Ackerman function and how to write the function how to convert it into C language and how it works to understand how it works etc so if you feel uncomfortable about calculation of this function, go ahead and try to calculate the, uh, f this function with those given numbers. For example, you can cal by hand you can calculate it a3 and um, a3 is three, three, you're gonna get 61. So maybe you can begin with a2 two, two in order not to complicate things, but, um, not to complicate things. Uh, but if you have any question about the function, if you have any question about the C representation, feel free to ask. See you. Bye-bye.